purify me. Purify my ambitions. Purify my motives. Sanctify me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to be pure. I will remain pure. But I want the assignment to be pure. I don't want the assignment to become God. I don't want the assignment to replace God. We need to understand the assignment is the assignment and it comes from God, but it is not to replace God. And we got to pray, baby. We, we got to stay in the spirit. Hallelujah. We got to stay in the spirit. Hallelujah. I must, Sister Earlene Beckton. Yes, that's Ruth Sinclair. Adrian Lawrence, God bless you. Yes, yes. Purify my hearts. Our hearts purify our ears. Alfred Banyard, it is. That song is my consecration song. You know, and sometimes, you know, the Lord may have us to move into this in the first part of the year. But I don't know, uh, month nine, it's time to birth something fresh. Hallelujah. Oh, I must have <laughs> an authentic. Yes, that's my sister Ruthie. Hallelujah. Please get this project. Play it in your car. Play it in your homes. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Gerald Folsom, yes. Stay in the spirit. That's right. That's right. Dr. Kim Watson, that's right, Sister Erdine Gitter. Elder, Elder Chestnut, eh, Shaba. To be more sensitive, to be more aware, Pastor Lori Ann Jones. Yes, Mother Pearl, God bless you. Come on in. Brenda Dumas, I know it's my favorite. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, that's my sister. Oh, shake up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah in my life. Ah, good morning, Mr. Your Grace, Bishop Sellers and Todd. Good morning. Mildred Watson, good morning. Great morning to Union. Great morning. Denise Williams, yes, yes. Come on, Pastor Sheila. Yes, you were singing on this. Hallelujah. Live at Convocation, Amazon or www.gotellit.org it will never die these are songs birth of the spirit so it will never die i am nia shabazz good morning precious name of the song consecrate me yes consecrate me it's on my project live at convocation hey dr tangerine keep me pure holy spirit keep me pure Keep me pure. Woo! A move <laughs> of the Holy Ghost in my life. That's what we desire. And in order for that to, to be dominant in our lives, that move of Holy Spirit to be dominant in our lives, to normalize. Thank you, English. She's putting it in the chat. So you can grab it at our website. We've got them uh, in our bookstore. And uh, you can get it on Amazon.com. But come on to the website and get it. Hallelujah. Zelma Flood. God bless you. Elder Ladia. God bless you. Sissy. Gloria Jean Harris. Pastor Rita Bill. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I must have a valid, authentic move of the Holy Ghost in my life. I must have. I must have, I want you to say that. Would you write that down? I must have a valid, authentic, legitimate move of Holy Spirit in my life. Would you please go, just go ahead and put that in as we are talking about hearing Holy Spirit every day. Come on, Sister Peaches, my niece, hearing Holy Spirit every day and I woke up this morning 
And what I said to Holy Spirit was, good morning, Holy Spirit. I fully expect to hear and obey you today. That, that's my, that was my opening proclamation. I, good morning, Holy Spirit. I fully expect to hear and obey you today. Hallelujah. Somebody write that down. Come on, Aaron. I must have a valid Catrice Monet. I must have Joan Marlowe a valid, a valid. I must have Dr. Alma. Come on, we getting ready to do some work. <laughs> Sister Bamberg. Pastor Bamberg, we getting ready to do some work. We on day. We must get the church to Pentecost. Hallelujah. We must get the church to Pentecost. And the church is not a black church, a white church. He's talking about the whole church. He's talking about the, his entire body. And we don't know his entire body. We better be very careful about who we think is in the body and who is not. He said, get my church to Pentecost. That's what he said. Get my church to Pentecost. Ah, I must have a valid, I must have a, an authentic, I must have a legitimate move of the Holy Ghost in my life. I must have, there, there cannot be, uh, hold on just a minute, I'm going to tag just a little bit more of that. There cannot be uh, any suspicious activity going on in my life. Uh, I, I must have a valid move of the Holy Ghost in my life. I must have a valid. It, it's got to be valid. It's got to be legitimate. It's got to be authentic. I can't have uh, suspicious behaviors, patterns moving and operating at the same time that I desire a valid, legitimate, authentic move of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I, I must have a valid move of the Holy Spirit. This is not a time. I, I got to be purified before God. I just want to tag a little bit more of that. Just that right there. I must have... <laughs> I must have, yes, 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 Sister Tanny. Good morning, Holy Spirit. I fully expect to hear and obey you today. <laughs> In my life, I must. Have a Woo. I must have. I must have. I must have. I must have. Oh, glory. I must. to God. I've got to have it. i got to have it. Come on, let that soak in your spirit today. Good morning, Mother Sheila Roberts. God bless you. Yes. School of the fire. Oh, come on. Come on, Beverly Joyce Fish. I must have. I must have. I must have. Going up again. Come on. Good morning, Rosalie Brown. Good morning. Woo. Good morning, Holy Spirit. I fully expect to hear and obey you today in my life. <laughs> Woo. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, God. Day number two of our fast. Day number two of the month of September as we are 
moving into a time and season of consecration as we are moving into this authentic move of Holy Spirit as we are refreshing ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Somebody might say, why, Bishop? Why, why is this? Because I must keep my ear to the Lord. I must keep my ear to the Lord. And I must be able to hear. This is not the season to be tricked. All right? It's not the season to be bamboozled. Not the season to be hoodwinked. Not the season. Baptism with the Holy Spirit is real. And living by the Spirit is real. This is a real life. You were never born of the Spirit or born again to flunder and blunder and stumble through your life. All right. <laughs> and so you have got to hear what I'm saying to you. You've got to hear what I'm saying. <laughs> we have got to move into a place where it is normal behavior to obey Holy Spirit every day. This is the assignment. We must get to Pentecost and the road to Pentecost is paved with obedience. My God, in the name of Jesus, somebody write that down. John, somebody write that down. The road to Pentecost is paved with obedience. Obedience to Holy Spirit. Obedience to the scriptures. Obedience to leadership, obedience to the guidelines and the laws and the boundaries that are put in your life. The road to Pentecost cannot have in it disobedient people. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You cannot be disobedient on your way to Pentecost. Your obedience is a catalyst for a, a reformation, a transformation, and possibly even a revolution. Your obedience to Holy Spirit. <laughs> Come on in here, Bobby Dunmore. Come on, Shervon. Let's go. Your obedience. Yes, yes, your obedience to Holy Spirit is the catalyst. It's what moves. It's what agitates the atmosphere for a real outpouring of Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And so we must practice and perfect obedience to Holy Spirit. When the horn of oil is poured on us, when the Holy Spirit comes up on us, we must obey, folks. This is not optional. This ain't multiple choice. If there is to be a move of God, and there is going to be, and there is being a move, and you want to be a part of this, you must perfect obedience and not obedience with a toe up face not obedience with a messed up attitude but obedience joyful obedience joyful obedience because you know the assignment there cannot be a valid move of holy spirit in your life if you are disobedient Ha, ah, glory to God. And delayed obedience is disobedience. God has put this in my spirit, Dr. Christine. You stirred me this morning. I got so caught up, I almost didn't get over here. Whoa, obedience to the Holy Ghost is the catalyst that we need to agitate the atmosphere. What would happen? If 100% of the people 
who have received the baptism with the Holy Spirit were obedient to the Holy Spirit. Good God Almighty. I'm not even dealing with the people that have not had the experience. That's our job. If we receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, then our assignment is to usher others into the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Amen. But what would happen? Just think about this for a minute. Think about this for a minute. My God, think about this, Sister Jenkins. What would happen in the earth if 100% of the people who have received the baptism with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, was obedient to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Somebody on free conference call, somebody on Zoom, answer that question for me. What would happen if, <laughs> my God, my God, my God, what would happen? What would happen? I just heard this, Pastor William Limon, today is your birthday. And I want to send you that CD or you can come by the cathedral and pick it up. I want you to have the actual CD. Glory to God. I want to put that in your hand. That's your birthday gift. I'm going to put two of them in your hand. One for your house, one for your car. That's your gift. I, I just heard that in the Holy Spirit. You need to hear this. It's going to release something fresh in your life. Man of God, I just want to ask somebody, Deidre Harrell, I just want to ask somebody, if 100% of the people who were baptized with the Holy Ghost were obedient to the Holy Ghost, what would happen? What would happen in the world? What would happen in the earth? What would happen in your life? What would happen in the economy? What would happen in the educational stream? What would happen in the government? If what, don't you ever think for one minute that there are not people baptized with the Holy Spirit in all of these mountains of culture, this burst. But why isn't, why isn't the needle moving like it should? Because those that are baptized with the Holy Spirit are not obedient to the Holy Spirit. Ooh, I need somebody to hear me right now. I need somebody to hear me right now in the name of Jesus. I need you to hear me right now. I want to ask the question again, and I'm going to ask it again. What would happen if 100% of the people who are baptized with Holy Spirit were obedient to Holy Spirit. What would happen? What would happen? What would happen if in the earth, what would happen if we could, if we hear Holy Spirit, we're receiving the baptism with the Holy Spirit, we receive Holy Spirit and we Practice obedience every time we heard Holy Spirit. We did not rationalize it. We did not fight about it. We were not arguing. We didn't have a bad attitude. We didn't, we didn't stop and kick and slam doors and poke our lip out. Mm. What would happen? What would happen in North Carolina? What would happen in Detroit? What would happen in Atlanta? What would happen in Dallas? What would happen in Houston, San Antonio, Washington, D.C.? What would happen in Baltimore? What would happen? What would happen at the State House? What would happen at the White House? What would happen at the Courthouse? What would happen in the Jail House? What would happen even in the Drug House? What would happen if 100% of the people baptized, not even dealing with the part of the body that is not yet entered into that position, have not yet had that experience. But what would happen if 100% of the people, just the people baptized with the Holy Ghost were obedient to Holy Ghost when he spoke? What would happen? What would happen in your life 
If you were 100% obedient to the Holy Spirit, you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But what would happen? What would happen? It would create such an energy. It would create. No one could stop the church. No one could defile. No one could do anything that would have a, a, a negative impact on the force of that. I just want you to get that in your mind. Try to get that picture in your mind. What would happen? Oh, glory to God. <laughs> Woo! If you didn't stomp, kick, and slam those, come on, poke out your lips when obedience was your was your responsibility. What would happen? What would happen in the choir? What would happen in the music world? What would happen in the entertainment world? Where would we be? What would happen in politics? What would happen with our children? What would happen with the children and the millennial generation if 100% of the people who are baptized with the Holy Spirit obeyed Holy Spirit 100% of the time? I'm going to ask my question again. Oh God, it am I Come on, Tiffany Welch. What would happen? This thing to turn me all around. Good God, if 100% of the people baptized with the Holy Ghost was, was obedient to Holy Spirit 100% of the time, do you realize the power that you and I are carrying to, to execute a move of God? Do you know what would happen in the economy? Do you know what would happen in terms of brutality and even in social justice? In, you know, in racial relationships? My God, if just, if just the people baptized with the Holy Ghost just obeyed him 100% of the time, let's not even deal with the people that don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let's not even talk about the people that don't believe in tongues. That's not even talking about, okay, let's, let's, let's just deal with the core group of people who identify as Pentecostal. Just the people that identify as Pentecostal. Just the people that identify that the initial evidence of the baptism with the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. Let's, let's, let's just separate that group out. Although we are all members of the body of Christ, and although we all have redemption as the outcome of our faith in Jesus, but just the people who identify as Pentecostal, who identify in the renewal of Holy Spirit. That's the new word now, renewal. Pentecostalism, the renewal, charismatic. Uh, it, whatever segment of Pentecost that you identify, full gospel, whatever you identify, charismatic Catholic, come on here. Oh God, Messianic Jews, whatever part, whatever door you came through, and just imagine, Elder Nanny Johnson, imagine then if 100% of the people who identify as Pentecostal, who have experienced the baptism with the Holy Spirit, were obedient to Holy Spirit 100% of the time. want to know what kind of world do you see what kind of world do you see that can possibly happen what kind of world do you see glory to the man no shame what kind of world do you see what kind of existence would we be in if just the pentecostals was obedient to holy spirit 100 percent of the time and so when God says, get my church to Pentecost, he ain't just talking about the jumping and the, and the dancing and the, and the miracles. He's talking about your obedience, people. He's talking about your obedience. What will happen in your life? You identify as Pentecostal. You identify. Let's, let's just talk about your life, your world, my life, my world. What will happen 
if we were obedient to Holy Spirit 100% of the time. This is why we're fasting. This is why I'm fasting. I want to be obedient 100% of the time. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart, I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. That's what I'm asking us today. That's what the Holy Spirit is asking of us today. That's what he's asking. You know, down, listen, <laughs> down to everything that comes in our eyes, comes in our ears, the little assignments that we put off way too long, the little areas that he asks us to improve in and we take way too long. I believe there would be no mental health issues. I believe that the body of Christ would be healthy and whole and healed. If every member of the body was flowing in obedience, your leader to leadership, flowing in obedience. Listen, obedience does not require your liking it or uh, even sometimes agreeing with it. Amen. You, what, what would happen if we were submitted to leadership that, that gives us an instruction and we don't want to do it. We don't like it. We don't agree. We don't, ah, nah, nah, nah. But what if that's Holy Spirit speaking to you and you won't do it because you got your mind made up about what you're not going to do? Holy Spirit, he's, he's speaking to us, folks. Oh, my God. Ah, not my see. What would be the impact of 100% obedience among just those that identify as Pentecostals upon the healthcare system. Would there, what would happen? How would that look in terms of sickness and disease? How would that look in terms of childhood traumas and, and violations and, and mental health? I just hear that in the spirit of God. And I, I don't blast anybody. I don't know your story, but I'm going to tell you something. If you gave your mind to the Holy Ghost, if you would stop and say, Holy Ghost, take my mind. Take my mind. If if I, I don't, I'm not a clinician, oh glory to God. I, I I don't I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. I'm not even a good uh counselor. Emo I, no, that I, I know my assignment. But what would happen if you who claim depression or you who claim oppression, or you who claim some form of traumatized life choices, thoughts, decisions, but what would happen if just every day you began your day hearing and obeying Holy Spirit. What do you think the impact of that would be on mental health? What do you think if you actually said, Holy Spirit, I need you in my mind. The old saints used to say he's a heart fixer and a mind regulator. Y'all, y'all don't, y'all come over here, D. Dwayne. Hey, shaka, my deal, shaya. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What, what would happen? Hallelujah. Old saint said, I, want, I, I rise this morning to give uh, uh, honor and glory to God. Saved me, sanctified me, brought me out. Because he's a heart fixer and a mind regulator. But you ain't going to never have your mind regulated if you continue in disobedience. If you continue in disobedience. <laughs> Hallelujah. And because the road to Pentecost is paved with obedience. Woo, glory to God. Now, I want to just talk a little bit about just some of the ways in which we have to be mindful of Holy Spirit speaking to us in our lives. I just want us, us to be mindful of that uh, because sometimes when we 
are talking about Holy Spirit, I want us to go back to, okay, so how does this really work? How is it that I uh, can hear Holy Spirit? The first thing that we want to talk about is that inward witness, that inward witness of Holy Spirit, the inward witness of Holy Spirit, knowing how Holy Spirit works in the inward witness, in the inward witness. Do you know when Holy Spirit is working in the inward witness, when he is working in the inward witness, your inward witness, and, and, and that, that is, that is, that is, a, I want to, I want to show you something. Get your Bibles for just a minute. Hallelujah. I, I just, this just, Holy Spirit just kind of dropped this in my heart for us. Um, Holy Spirit, I love you so much. Glory to God. I want you to go. I, 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 want, I want to look at John 7, the Gospel of John, chapter number 7. And on the last day of the feast, verse 37, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. And whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. Rivers of living water, streams of living water will flow from within him. And verse 39 says, by this he meant the spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. All right. Up to that time, the spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Wow. That, 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 that just, I want to set some time because as we're digging through Holy Spirit, moving in the lives of people from the Old Testament to now, we have to realize that there has been a shift in terms of our ability to hear and obey Holy Spirit. Remember now, Jesus is standing here. This is right after this beautiful conversation in John 4 with the woman at the well who he first introduced Holy Spirit to this woman at the well. If you would drink the water that I give you, you'll never thirst again. Now, we understand from John 7, <clears throat> that the water in which he spoke of was the spirit. He spoke of the water of the Holy Spirit. He spoke of the water of the Holy Spirit. Now, he says, if you would believe on me, as the scripture says, then out of your belly, hallelujah, from within you would flow rivers of living water. All right. Now, I, I love this because when I think of Holy Spirit in me, that inner witness is vital to my obedience. Rivers of life, Holy Spirit flows from within me, flows out of me. I've got a river of life flowing out of me it makes the lame to walk and the blind to see it opens prison doors and sets the captives free oh glory to god come on here i've got a river of life good morning lynn cato good morning G gita coming up the timeline god bless y'all like tag and share tanya whoa glory to god hallelujah so if i believe as the scriptures have said, then out of my belly flows rivers of living water. So up out of my belly, my innermost being, which is your spirit man, 
flows rivers of living water. We are not in the dispensation of time where Holy Spirit has not been given. He has been given to everyone who believes. All right, now, the inner witness, that inward witness is one of the ways that I must hear Holy Spirit speak. That inward witness, that inward witness, the leadings, the leadings. Sometimes there is a check in your spirit, a check. You get a check. You get, you get, you get a check. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of you have dreams and some of you have visions. That's one of the ways that the water flows out of your belly. All right. You have the word of God. You have the scriptures, you have leading. So that's about eight or nine different ways that the water of the spirit is leading us and speaking to us. All right. So we have, we have the inner witness, the inner knowing. We have the word of God. We have leadings. We have certain leadings. Certain leadings, you know, uh, without Lord Jesus, without rationalizing and trying to see what that is, be more flexible when Holy Spirit is leading you, when Holy Spirit comes upon you. Be more uh, uh, surrendered. Be more fluid. The quickenings, oh, the unction. Sometimes I, I get that quickening, I, and I know you know, that, that quickening is, okay, Holy Spirit. Sometimes I get a check. Sometimes I get a check. It just, it's just, it's just a check. You, and, and you know, okay, that's, that's, that's a, that's a stopping point. That, that's a, okay, check. Just, I'm checked. And, and don't try to push past that check. That's a check. That, that check is there for a reason. That's the, the water of the spirit. So we have a, inner witness and an inner knowing we have the word of god we we have those things that 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 the scripture will holy spirit will bring up in our in our hearts and we know that that's him talking to us and then there are certain leadings certain leadings of the lord certain leadings mm, 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 certain leadings of the lord and then be mindful of the check the check that you get in your spirit. I, you know, you can be in the middle of a conversation. You can be in the middle of something, you know, doing whatever it is that you're doing. And um, you get that check. You get that check. You get that inner witness. You get that check. <laughs> I'm not a dreamer, but dreams and visions are ways in which Holy Spirit can bubble up. Have you ever prophesied to yourself? Do you ever prophesy to yourself when you speak in tongues and you can begin to speak in tongues, speak in tongues, speak in tongues. Come on, Dennis, speak in tongues, speak, speak in tongues, come on. And you can speak in tongues and then Holy Spirit will interpret those tongues and he will give you a word and you don't need another prophet or an evangelist to be there with you. These are ways that Holy Spirit wants to speak to us. And we must be responsive enough. I see some of you saying, yes, that has happened. Sometimes I'm just praying, 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 praying in the Holy Spirit. I'm walking through the house and praying in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will speak. So that inner witness, remember we are training our human spirit. So if we believe and in that believe is obedience, you cannot believe and not obey. And so if we believe as the scriptures say, out of our bellies will flow rivers of living water. And so why would I disobey? Why would, why would I create an alternate way? Why do we do that? Because we get so set in our ways. I'm just watching the body of Christ 
you know, I'm watching this pandemic. I'm watching this COVID. And I'm watching how God is using the science as a scientific remedy to a problem of sickness and disease. Now, I'm a nurse by profession. That was what I did before the Lord came and recruited me full time. And I, I just watched, I watched the, the hypocrisy. I watched the fear. I watched the propaganda. I was looking at this so-called prophet that says God told her not to wear a mask. Ooh-wee. Folks, it's some lying spirits out here. And I thought about the time when God put a lying spirit in the mouth of a prophet. And it's all to cause confusion. It's just all to cause division in the body of Christ. Number one, we don't believe in science, which is a problem. Your, your theology ought to be able to integrate science. Our theology should not exclude the other components of God's creation. We shouldn't be afraid of science. We should not demean or dismiss science. Our faith should, should be able to integrate science. Why would you be a doctor? Why would you be a nurse? Why would you be in the medical field? If your faith, your theology cannot integrate science, this is foolishness, folks. It's just foolishness. And the propaganda, the fear, oh, nobody did this, nobody did that, and nobody did that, but 800,000 people have died from COVID. I just watch it. And so this alleged prophet, she gets up and she says, the Lord said for her not to wear a mask. I said, baby, <laughs> that wasn't the Lord. That wasn't, you should have got a check. You should get a check. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit, if you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you should get a check when you off. You should be checked. There's an inward witness that would check you. And if the inward witness is not sufficient, God will send a physical witness to you. To check your thoughts. To check you. See, this obedience to Holy Spirit is not something that I'm going to try to paint a picture that is always easy. But Holy Spirit is not in the earth to make us better at doing what we want to do. Holy Spirit is in the earth to help us do the will of God, to help us discern the will of God. If it were that easy to obey Holy Spirit, more of us would. But it's often because of what we already don't believe or what we already have said we are gonna do or we ain't gonna do or some type of enculturation from family or environment, some type of indoctrination from your denomination or from those that you care about. Your belief system is so set and so rigid that you can't obey Holy Spirit. And this is the thing I love about Holy Spirit. He is intentional about bringing to us the alternate of what we want to do. He is an expert at this. <laughs> so I have this the way I want it. This is what I'm going to do. I ain't going to do that or I'm going to do this. And Holy Spirit bring, comes right in and brings the alternate. Now, that's why we struggle with obedience. Because we want Holy Spirit to agree with our already made up mind, with our already made up thought processes, with our decision that we already have rooted in our thought life. But remember, Holy Spirit doesn't flow from your thought life. Holy Spirit flows from the belly, 
from your spirit. And oftentimes there will be some disconnect or some disagreement between the thought life and between the spirit. And this is why we don't obey because it doesn't agree with our spirit. And so let me just prophesy to you. Let me just say this from the, from a perspective of science. That's just from a perspective of faith and science. Faith and science are not enemies to each other. But the world and the variants of the pandemic are not going to go away by prayer. I know, I know y'all ain't gonna like this. You ain't gonna like this kind of teaching, and I know you're not. And I know exactly what I'm saying about the Spirit of God. You're not gonna like it. It's not gonna go away by prayer. It's not gonna go away. God provides a remedy through another means. And we're fighting about this. Why? 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 Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. So we should have a check. We should have a check in our spirit. When we're being stubborn, when we're being stubborn, that stubbornness is the sin of idolatry. Stubbornness. Come on, y'all don't like that. You, oh, glory to God. Come on, Dr. Felicia. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Your, your theology should not ignore science. Your theology should not ignore education. Your theology should not ignore government. Are y'all listening to me? Your faith <laughs> should be able to integrate all of these, all of these dynamics of God. And we should be able, but we're so set here. We're so set here. And so we delay, we delay, we delay, we delay, we delay. We delay, we delay. And we override, oh, I'm not going to do it. I made up my mind. Or that's just how I'm going to do it. Or that's just how I am. And you're overriding Holy Spirit. And then when you override the inward witness and the check, God will send people to you. And you, and, and you don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear that. So how can we obey Holy Spirit? How can we obey Holy Spirit when what we have in our mind puts us in opposition and causes us to be hostile to God? See, I ain't talking about adultery and fornication today. <laughs> Just talking about sheer stubbornness. Just sheer stubbornness. Here's another one that catches us. Procrastination. Just procrastination. Do you realize that you override Holy Spirit and that delayed obedience is disobedience? Delayed obedience. And the bottom line is we, we can't submit unless we agree. We, we don't, we don't want to obey nothing that we don't agree with. We don't have any reason not to agree. We just got it set in our minds. But we got this river of life that's on the inside of us that we consistently disobey. Oh, glory to God. You're not gonna like me today, but I I I, I love y'all. This, this is this, this ain't going away by prayer. This ain't going away because that no, this is a plague. And the remedy to this is going to come through science. And we are gonna reject it. Okay. Okay. Listen, I understand the struggle. I get it. But I'm here to tell you something, folks. I, let me tell you <laughs> from a nurse perspective, this, we are going to have to hear Holy Spirit, not our thoughts, but Holy Spirit. He said, if you believe, if you will believe enough to obey, then out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Listen, folks, 
Listen to me very carefully. Mm. Oh, glory to God. This, we, we've got to see Holy Spirit at a higher level. We need a higher view of obedience to Holy Spirit. We don't, we think we, we, we think we are, 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 are maybe uh, uh, disobeying somebody. Oh, and that's just Bishop. Well, that Holy Spirit is giving us remedies that we won't take, giving us directions and directives that we won't obey because we are stubborn minded. Some of us are stubborn as a mule. And the older we get, the more set in our ways we are. I know what I'm saying by the spirit of God and I, but I don't know who I'm talking to. And so God will send people to you because the check, the inner witness, you've overrode it. And now God has to send a physical person. Then God sends another sign. Then God sends another something because his desire is that 100% of us would obey him 100% of the time. We don't see Holy Spirit outside of church. We don't see Holy Spirit outside of spiritual stuff. But Holy Spirit is not limited to his wisdom being given to us only in areas of spirituality. He speaks to us in every facet of our lives. And we have to know when he's speaking. Procrastination stubbornness some of us are not quote unquote rebellion rebellious we're stubborn we are set in our way so we cannot we cannot obey holy spirit we can't obey it because we are set we are procrastinating we heard it um ah, i do it ah, i do it okay how you go fall in line with a move of the spirit of God and you can't obey simple instructions. The road to Pentecost is paved with obedience. And when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree. I got to go. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we got to know who God, who has God used in your life to speak? Why are they wrong now? Why are they suddenly not the right voice? Folks, if 100% of the people who identify as Pentecostals would obey Holy Spirit, 100% of the time, we could get rid of COVID-19. We could get rid of it. We could get rid of drugs in our streets. We could get rid of the population of prisons being totally full. We could get rid of some of this stuff. We could get rid of illiteracy. We could get rid of all of the, the mental health and the emotional dysfunctionism in our culture if 100% of the people who identify as Pentecostals obey Holy Spirit 100% of the time. Hey, I don't know about you, but I'm going to be in that number. This is why I'm fasting. This is why I'm seeking the Lord. It's too late in my journey to make mistakes. It's too late in my journey to go off the rails. I've got to obey him 100% of the time. And not just obey, joyfully obey. We had an elder in our church that said years ago, Holy Spirit wants us to obey him. First time we hear it. Good God Almighty. Oh, glory. God, my shit. God, I got to get out of here. But I'm telling you, this is the word of the Lord to the people of God. Hallelujah. 100% of the people 
who identify as Pentecostals. You have the river of the Holy Ghost bubbling up out of your spirit would become obedient to Holy Spirit 100% of the time. Change the trajectory of our world. I don't know about you, <laughs> but I'm going to be in that number. <laughs> we can sing a song, oh Lord, I want to be in that number. I'm going to be in that number. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to be in that number. I want you to change your thinking right now. Lord, any area in my life, I'm stubborn. Any area in my life that I'm slowful. Any area in my life that I am not following the leading of Holy Spirit today. And this month of September 2021, it will die. It will die. I must obey 100%. I love y'all. <laughs> Woo, listen, I got to go. <laughs> Would y'all please like, tag, and share? <laughs> please tag and share this on your social media platforms in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's get others into the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And today, fully expect to hear and obey Holy Spirit. I love y'all. I got to go. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm going to be in that number. Hallelujah. I'm going to see.